but it seemed like the most logical place to go next would be some color grading or just some color editing. And um, so I brought some new clips in so we won't get, we won't get bored with the ones I've been working with. I'm going to put a new sequence in here because this is a new project I've made uh, and it's called Color Titles Output. Those are the next, the next three uh, tutorials. So I'm going to right click in here as we learned earlier and I'm going to say New Sequence. Sequence is the timeline. You see timeline, no sequences. They're both the same thing. A timeline is a sequence. But a timeline can have sequences in it. We'll go over that more in a future video as well. We'll call this one Color. And I have 1080p24 chosen, even though I'm using a bunch of 4K video. I think everything, it looks like everything over here is 4K now. But we'll still put uh, the 4K. Well, you know what? We ought to just work in a 4K, but this is something interesting to do. Color will end up being a 4K, but we're going to leave it in here. Now, I didn't explain earlier. I don't know what will come up as your, as your default when you're doing this. It might come up as DV. DV is, is just an old standard. Uh, it's what used to be on TV. I don't know what will come up when you first, it might come up as HDV. And there are all these different settings. Are. Don't let this trouble you. I mean, what I've just learned over the years is what's inside AVC HD here is pretty good. And usually, since I'm usually working at least 1080p, I just leave this open. You can pick any of these, but you know, what you want to, what you want to consider first of all is what do you want to be? Do you want to be, what size you want to be? 720p, 1080p, etc. I'm going to go ahead and pick this, and, but I'm still going to make a 4K video, and I'll show you how it's going to happen. So we'll say OK. Now, I'm going to use this bit of 1080p video to start, this turkeys video, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pull it down here even before I do any editing or looking at it or anything. I'm going to say Change Sequence Settings. Premiere gives you the option of going ahead and keeping it 1080p24 as we set, set it up, or you can just hit Change Sequence Settings, and it changes this sequence, which is the sequence is called color up here, and it's color down here. This is this up here, okay? So it gives you the option of going ahead and changing it if you want to. So I'm going to say yeah. So now it just converted that sequence into, uh, if you look up here, now the sequence is 3840 by 2160. Now we're going to get into color. Sorry for that little si aside there, but I want you to be aware of that and know how that works. Okay, so... Now we're looking at full-size video of these, these turkeys. It's a statue of turkeys, and it's in Asheville, North Carolina. They're out on, uh, I can't remember what the square is there, uh, the main square there, sort of in Asheville. So that's, some of this video is going to be about Asheville. And I'm going to hit play, and we're going to watch a little of it. Okay, there, now this brings up a way to edit. Uh, I, I had you putting in points and out points up here in the preview window previously. You can just drag all your clips onto the timeline, doesn't matter, and edit from the timeline. A lot of people prefer timeline editing, so we're going a bit into that as well in this, in this video. So that begs the question, how am I going to cut this? Well, I could go to the end and I could pull this to, to pull back. But there, there might be an easier way that you might like. I hit the C key, C as in cat, and what that does, you see these little tools over here? We've not talked about those yet. But these are all various tools you can use to move your video around and edit with them. There's a little razor tool here. See, it says razor tool, and it says in parentheses beside it, C. So that when it puts it in parentheses, that means that, that C is the uh, shortcut. So I use this shortcut all the time. I'm going to type C. And what that does, you see what it did to my, to my uh, cursor there that I've got? It turned into a little red uh, slash across a razor. So it made it a cut tool. Now, if I do V, as in Victor, it turns it back to the point tool, and I can drag stuff around. The point tool is for dragging and repositioning stuff. The C tool is for cutting things. So I'm going to cut that right there. And immediately, it turns the previous clip white. And what that means is it, it selects it, and basically it's going to allow you to, you know, what are you going to do with it? Well, you're probably going to delete it if you just cut there. You don't have to delete it. But I'm going to go ahead and hit Delete key on my, on my Mac, and there it's gone. Now I have, I'm going to do the V key, so I get the V is in Victor again, and it gets it back to a pointer here. Now on my previous one second here is black. I can, I can either grab this and pull it, or I can right click and do the ripple delete, as we talked about earlier. Ripple delete will be more important to you as you move forward uh, with your editing, because it's, it's a very cool tool. It moves everything that's been edited to the right backward. 
All right, so anyway, so we have the turkeys. The turkeys are pretty dark. Uh, and so, you know, it was dark that night. We shot this at night. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play for a second here. I'm just in Nashville, kind of messing around. Because Betty Tom's ever going to see Eric Johnson concert. Right here where the pigs are on Pack Square. Pack Square is what it is. We're still up. We're going to go ahead and shoot the uh, turkey and the pigs. And yes, we're going to see the legendary guitarist Eric Johnson that night, which was awesome. Eric's great. Anyway, so I, I put another, I cut here because I'm probably going to cut this other video out. Let me go ahead and mute this. You don't have to listen to me talk. We're going to hit the M key to mute. And uh, you can see I'm at Merrill Lynch. There's the Vance Memorial. Maybe maybe we keep the Vance Memorial here for a minute. We'll just cut there. Now I'm going to do the V key again. The V key, I'm going to click on here. I'm going to delete. And we're going to right click and delete that. Let's talk about color now and color grading. So we want the turkeys. I don't know if I want to pan up here and see these kind of folks here. I'll probably cut that out too. Let's go ahead and cut that out right now where we're at it. Here. And we'll go over to here. And we'll show the pigs for just a second. There they are. Okay. I'll hit the v, v key again. I'm going to delete this. And here's where it really nice to ripple delete. So I have, edit, I have an edit back over here, but I'm going to ripple delete, and it pulls everything back. Really nice. Okay, so we've got our turkeys, we've got our pigs. I'm going to go up here to what's called color on this top up here. You see this? These are some editing tabs that we have, and this brings up a very powerful tool called the Lumetri Color uh, Editing System. It actually takes you out of, out of the sort of layout you were in, uh, so I have my editing CS 5.5, which is what I like to use. I've got it up here on top. We'll go back to that in just a minute. But we're in a color grading uh, system here. It pulls up this nice scope, which shows you you got a lot of dark here. And here's where your color range sort of lays. So watch what, hey, it's kind of cool to see this. I don't use this a whole lot other than just to kind of gauge, you know, the levels. Uh, I, it's, it's more information, visual information. I keep my eyes mostly over here. When it comes up, it should come up in basic correction. And here are your basic tools. So, you know, if I want to brighten this whole thing, I might go over here to exposure and click on that little get little button right here and just pull to the right center. First of all, <laughs> I, I tried to uh, do it and I forgot I don't have anything selected. I'm going to click here. I'm going to select that. Now this is white and it's selected. And now everything <laughs> becomes able to edit. So we're going to pull the exposure up. You can see what's happening in that uh, in that scope over there. I'm actually bringing the gain up of everything, right? I'm raising the, the noise floor. Now you're gonna see a little bit of grain come into this since I'm shooting at night and it doesn't have the best light. But there you go, I've, I've all automatically effectively changed the way that looks. Now, if I, if, I, if I don't wanna go too far with it, I can bring the exposure back. I can leave it kind of dark and I can bring the shadows out. So I can decrease the shadowing. And that sometimes is more what you want rather than exposure. Now you can change the temperature. This, this probably looks about how it looked that night. But if you want to shift more toward sort of a bluish look, you know, it depends on how you want to tone this thing or more toward a warm, you pick temperature up here, right? I very seldom use tint. I'll, I'll show you what it does. It shifts you more towards greens or, I mean, if you wanted to do something that's very uh, stylistic or something, you could choose that. I do go to saturation a good bit now and again. Maybe I want that to be just a little bit more saturated. And so you can see you can go to a point where it looks really too much, or you can take it down to black and white if you want a black and white. Very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to go just a little bit more saturation. Now you have all kinds of other stuff in here. I'm not going to delve too deeply into it. A lot of times I will go into the creative. The creative has some... Uh, you know, some, some other things you can do. This faded film, you can make it look like old film if you want to. I, I very seldom use that. Sometimes I will sharpen a little or, or, not sh or soften a little. But mostly, mostly I leave that, kind of leave that alone. Maybe I sharpen just a little bit. Vibrant, there's a different kind of saturation here. The vibrant sort of kind of brings everything a little, makes it just pop a little more. And you have a separate saturation that goes along with the vibrance under this. And you have this intensity key here. You know, I, I don't honestly use intensity very much. It just, it just sort of, again, it just sort of defines everything a little bit better. Uh, but, but, you know, you, you can use these things if you want to. Curves, you need to know a whole, probably, probably need to come back to this whole Lumetri thing and talk about how curves work and how the colors, color wheels work. 
it's it's more of an advanced sort of thing. But you can see you have a lot of power. You can change your just your shadows, your midtones, your highlights. You got this uh, the secondary. It's, it's folks. It's it's a deep deep rabbit hole. The whole color thing. And since we're just starting with um, with the basics, I don't want to get you too deep into it just yet. Uh, but so you can see the ma main thing I would say that most beginners are going to want and going to be happy with is the basic color correction and perhaps the creative. Now I will show you vignette because some people do like this sort of effect. Uh, let's say we want to, just for drama's sake, we want these turkeys to be just a little bit more, we want, we want them to stand out more, we want the background to be kind of dissolved in the background and maybe a little darker. You can actually vignette these things. I'm going to, here's the direction I would probably go. You see what's happening there? How it's either, one, one way goes either white and or that one way goes sort of darker and you can pick your midpoint you know where do you want to how, how far in do you want to be like like that's all folks or do you want it to be more like that i do use this sometimes particularly if i'm doing commercials and if i'm slowing the video down which again is another another uh, lesson we'll do you can feather it you, know, you can make it either very uh, very harsh spotlighted almost or you can just let it fade just a little bit you can choose how round you want it to be and that's probably about right for this kind of 16.9, we call it 16.9 aspect video. So there we go. We've done a little bit of color correcting of this one clip. Well, if we want to move forward, look at the next clip, you just move forward. And the kind of cool thing is, is it automatically, I didn't even have to select this. When I toggle over it, when I pull the, the, the cursor thing or the timeline selector over it, it automatically pops to the next one. Now, a couple things we could do here. We could either start color grading on this one using this, these tools right here, or we're going to pop back over just for a second to the uh, editing 5.5 view here. Now I want to show you something that's kind of cool. If you go up here under effects controls, not effects up here, but effects controls over here, which is over the top of your preview window. If you go up here and click effects controls, then you're looking at the effects that have been that have been applied to this. Now we see there's nothing about color in here. All we have is we have our motion open. And we talked about motion a little bit in previous video. I'm going to pull back over this. Now when you're back in this mode, it does not automatically select. You have to select this. But I'm going to select the turkeys. And we know we just did our color correction deal on our turkeys, right? If you go over here and look, now you might have to look kind of close to see where it is, but Lumetri Color, the thing that we were just editing, is in here. If I click on this, all this mess right here below it, all these little things that are underneath the little toggled down button, is Lumetri Color. And it's, if we were to go in here and look, the same settings that were over there are, are in here. If we go to Basic Correction, all the things that we made, all the differences we made are here in a more sort of advanced uh, way to see them. I'm going I'm to twirl that back at Basic Correction. But all the stuff we did, the vignette and everything, it's all in here. Here's all the things that we did. So if we want to copy this one and paste it onto the pigs, then what we can do, we can actually, this, we can click on Lumetri Color, we can right click on it, and we can say copy. Or you can do a Command C or Control C, and that copies it too. Then we go over here to the pigs, and if we want to apply the same thing to the pigs, we click on it, and we, we paste it. I'm going to do a Command V or Control V. That's what paste is. V is in Victor. Command V or Control V. Here we go. Command V. And look, there we've done the same thing to the pigs. Now we could make a decision. Well, you know, did, did, it, need, did it need to be that intense? Maybe not. Now here's the thing that's cool though. Once we've applied this to the pigs, we can go in and edit this one. And it doesn't change the one for the turkeys. The turkeys stays exactly like we've done. But we can go over here if we want to and go back to editing, or excuse me, go back to color. And like, like I think probably... It doesn't need to be as exposed as the other one was. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit, make it just a little bit darker. I might bring the shadows up just a little. Or not, we'll see. And yet, does it need as much of a vignette? I don't know. I'm going to pull back here. It might not need any vignette at all. We might just turn vignette off. Then we can leave these settings like this and just turn vignette off. And there you go. And now you're back to what, you know, I kind of liked some of the vignette though. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're just going to not do as much of it. Pull back more toward the center. That's not bad, is it? Okay, so there we go. There we've done the pigs. Let's see, let's get another piece of video here. So I'm gonna go back to my editing 5.5. Okay, 
Let's get rid of the turkeys for a minute here. This back part, I just drag over. I, I, I click down, left clicked, and just drag. Or I can just click on it either way. Sometimes I just, it, it's hard for me to explain why I do what I do. I just do it. So I've got some geese over here, which are real geese, in a pond. And so I'm going to look at this for a second. Okay, that's kind of cool. Shot this with my iPhone, I believe. I'm going to put an end point here, mark an end there. And I'm going to drag forward just a little bit. There's lots of pretty geese in the pond. I'll stop right along in here. Okay, so I'm going to drag the whole video, not just, well, let's drag just the video. We're not working with audio. I'll just drag just the video. I did that by clicking on just the little video icon, not the audio. And I pulled just the video down. You know, I'll, if I wanted to pull all of it down, I'd grab it in the middle, pull it down. We've discussed that earlier. This is just for people that pop in at this level instead of uh, one of the earlier ones. So here we go. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to say, you know what? That could stand some, some mid-tone uh, lightning. And it could probably also stand a little bit of, you know, maybe uh, richness added to the color. So I'm going to go back up to color again. And now I'm going to just you know, take, a, take a peek of what we want this one to do. We've got a basic correction. I'm going to say, hmm, exposure is not bad. I'm probably going to leave it like it is. Let's pull those geese a little bit out out of the into the, out of the shadows we'll say and let's look at our saturation again pretty nice but let's go ahead and add a little bit more to it make it just a little bit more golden or whatever and you know here again if you want to do a vignette here this might be an ideal place to do it just to take a little more emphasis off of all the brightness around here and more on what's in the center but uh, you know these are some things that I just might do the contrast so a lot of times I'll do contrast here now here's here's a here's a pointer for you Let's say we did want to expose this just a little bit more. Sometimes if when you just start doing your exposure, your contrast is going to go down. Very, very often I will use exposure and contrast sort of together. I might pull that exposure up, but then I might bring the contrast up a little more too. And look what that's doing. It's just bringing sort of a, a tightness to the color, isn't it? It's just so you can, you're, more, you're a little more emphasized on everything. Now, anytime you want to preview what it was before, and what it is, you know, what it um, was. And you know, that, that, let's go ahead and put us a little bit of vignette before I start making this point here. So I am going to turn it on. We're going to go to mount just a little bit more like this, maybe. Uh, midpoint, like that. I kind of like that. Not bad. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the editing 5.5 view. Sometimes this weird green thing happens here. There we go. Should go away. So I can sort of see what the difference is by looking at my preview window here and this, but I might not always be at the same point in my preview window. It just so happens I think I am, but um, maybe not. I'm toward the end of this one. It looks like I'm toward the middle of, of down here. But I will go back to effects control again, and you can just turn the whole thing off by clicking the toggle effect on and off. Now, it doesn't take it away, all your work you've done. It just turns it off. So there's the before. Here's after. See the total difference there? It's very dramatic, isn't it? I've taken something that's, that was pretty, but kind of dead and flat, to something that looks kind of magical. And that's what the color grading is all about. Folks, we're going to go way more in depth with color at a, in a later uh, tutorial that I have planned. But let's stop with this one today, since we're in our basics of learning. And we're going to move on to titling next when we use these same clips.